Hey, it's Sema here with Super Sensitive Human and today I'm going to give you a tour of my fall garden. I think the last video I did was in the springtime, so we missed summer, which is the nicest time, but it hasn't hit the frost yet, which is the other fall video I did, so you'll get to see it before the frost. Um, it's October, late Halloween weekend in 2017. I've lived in this house for three years now, so these plants are mostly two-ish years old, two to three years old. Um, this is my rental house, so I planted all these just for fun, I guess. Um, I might leave at any moment. Um, so I'm going to tell you just a little bit about how the different ones are doing, what I've observed about plants in uh, Zone 8 of Arizona, Central Desert, near Sedona, Rim Rock, Arizona. Um, I'll just tell you my favorite ones and how they do with or without water, stuff like that. So like, this is a... Hopi amaranth, that's got a lot of water, so it wouldn't really be this big if it didn't get any water, but it would probably grow without the water. Um, these ones, these like, I think they're like Russian sages or something. I want to get a bunch more of those because those do really well without water and grow pretty fast and have nice purple flowers. Uh, we have the yellow yarrow which looks like crap right now but it's coming back from the bottom it's it basically like grows throughout the monsoon season and then dies when the rain stops so I I really haven't been watering since the monsoon season at all um, just a little bit and I was gone for the whole month of August so it's still raining then but I wasn't here to really take care of stuff. So basically I haven't been taking care of the garden very much at all. And this is what it looks like. Uh, for some reason the agave is dying. I don't know why it's rotting in the middle. Not enough water. Too much water. Who knows. It's gross. But that's, uh, I didn't pay for that plant. That's just the Desert transplant. These guys are the native sunflowers that you'll find along the roadside and the riverbanks around here. These grow all by themselves and spread themselves without water. There's a whole bunch by my compost pile too. Um, the this is the native. I think it's called Braille brush or something. I like these ones. They're kind of like wonky and fall all over, but. I like their yellow flowers in the fall, so I would plant, transplant more of those into the garden. Apricot is a couple years old, hasn't had any yet. So I'm looking forward to seeing if that produces another year or so. The pompous grass or pompa, whatever it's called, this grows without any water. one I didn't plant, this was already in the yard, but this is a bird of paradise that doesn't get any extra water. This one, you see all the crickets, grasshoppers hopping away. They eat everything this time of year, so it's pretty ugly as far as leaves and stuff go. But the autumn sage is a true winner as far as has flowers in the fall where nothing really has flowers right now that I have and uh, grows well without very much water. This one gets the tail end of the water because there's a silver hose that comes up and loops around so it's kind of like on the edge of water but you'll see some other ones. So that this, this red one doesn't get any extra water and it's almost as big as that one. Uh, the This is sweet potato vine that I just planted with the sweet potatoes that I didn't eat fast enough that were sprouting, but I wouldn't really recommend planting sweet potato vines in the desert because they just don't do super well without 
water, but I planted it in the well of the fruit tree. So it kind of where the sprinkle sprinkler dripper comes out, there's a dripper that comes to each fruit tree. And uh, so it gets some of that, but basically I have to give it supplemental water to keep it from wilting. You have a melon. I have a melon. It's a little bowling ball sized melon here. Well, baby bowling ball, I guess. Um, this uh, is a yellow Hopi melon, something like that. I haven't picked it yet because it's not, doesn't seem like it's done growing. I still water that one every couple days and keep the vines. There's a vine growing up into the tree here. Keep the vines from wilting. Um, this corn's really turned out pretty cool. It's inside the house though, so maybe we'll get it at the end or something. That's a Sanagua, ancient local Sanagua corn found in a pot around here that somebody uh, grew out and planted and is selling the seeds of. Um, figs aren't doing too well. I don't think I have the right kind of fig for the desert because neither of my figs are too awesome. This is uh, my Arizona sycamore that I bought for my birthday. Um, my birthday is in August and I brought it home in the car but it was super hot and like windy and it was sticking out of the back of the car so all the leaves kind of fried and fell off and uh, it grew new leaves. So I'm excited to see how that one does next year. The This is the favorite plant in the garden. Uh, the lamb's quarters, which nobody eats that much for it being the favorite plant, but uh, it's really pretty. It's it has uh, these magenta, it's magenta lamb's quarters, and it has uh, magenta leaves, like super sparkly ones when it's small, and now that it's old, it's got the magenta stems and kind of the dead, dead leaves are getting the magenta color, but um, you see a crazy, crazy amount of seeds on here. It looks kind of like a marijuana plant or something. And that grows well with just a little supplemental water and grew all year like from early spring to just uh this last month it started producing seeds before then it was still edible and still producing greens all throughout the summer which is crazy more brittle brush more autumn sage those don't get any water uh, the pear produced this year, a couple pears, but they got kind of rotten and wet, so they, we didn't really get to eat them. But it probably produced like 10 or so, which is better than one or something the year before. Uh, the rose always does nice. I'd probably make more roses if I watered it and cut it, trimmed it. <laughs> Reed does well. This gets watered. The whole bed here gets watered. Um, I like how tall it is and I like how it's blocking the neighbor's house. It makes me feel like I'm in a tropical jungle. So uh, I don't feel too bad about growing the invasive reed out. Um, the snapdragons always do well and flower several times a year. So that's a good pick for the desert. You'll see those at other people's houses around here. Lots of snapdragons. Um, another sweet potato vine. Apples. Had a couple apples on it. The graft on the apple is doing really well. Stephen's graft the starts here, I guess. So it grew this much. The bite me apple. was awesome. 
had ten huge artichokes on it and then died. Totally died, now it's growing back again. Perennial plant, perennial vegetables. Basically it's a perennial permaculture garden inters interspersed with some things like the melon and the lamb's quarters that uh, I plant from seed. The peaches did amazing. There's these two peach trees, there's one over there and one here that were just these $10 Walmart discount trees and uh, they, this one probably produced like 100 peaches and that one probably produced like 25 peaches and uh, the other one was more tasty I guess. I wasn't here to eat it but I forget which one's which. One of them is a Reliance peach. Um, this is vines. Never saw how far this vine is growing through the peaches. The back on the fence there. Uh, evergreen vine that I tried to plant that's kind of hidden in the grapes, but apparently growing out. So uh, next year I'll chop, I'll take more peaches off the tree because there was so many that all the branches are broken. Like this branch down here. This branch here. Like all the branches broke from having too many peaches on them. Cherry didn't produce any cherries even though it did the year before so I don't know what's going on with that. The strawberries need a lot of water around here and these ones aren't in the sun anymore and they get eaten by bugs so strawberries are kind of like a good ground cover but kind of a failure as far as getting eaten. It's too cold here for this uh, Angelo tree but I'll bring it inside and maybe maybe it'll ripen. This one's like sort of starting to ripen but they had one fruit last year and now it has like four fruits so that's progress. It blooms and smells uh, really sweet too. I can't handle the smell because of my scent sensitivities but if you like the like, orange blossom smell it blooms all the time like for a very long time and uh, smells really strong. Like so you can see it bloomed recently because these little ones are still just growing. But it basically starts to bloom in the early springtime. The uh, zinnia is always a good bet. I don't really water these, but if I did, they would uh, be a lot nicer. And they grow, they bloom and grow. They bloom for a long time, like way up until frost, and bring a lot of color to the yard. The uh, this is the vegetable area, which it didn't do too good with this year, but didn't pay very much attention to it, except for my roommate grew this Navajo orange Hubbard squash, which is, uh, grew one, one really big one, like this, this big that is not here anymore. It's at his house, but, um, what was like 40 pounds or something, 40 pound squash. Here's an example of a smaller one that kind of half grew but rotted um, on the end. This is what it looks like. But we haven't eaten any yet, so we don't know what happens with that, what it tastes like or anything. I would not recommend planting the uh, Lombardi poplars on the south side of a house in Arizona because they just get fried and don't do well. Two of them are dead. I wanted them to shade the house and make a screen but they just get fried by the sun there. This is a tree tobacco that I'm growing that maybe I'll bring inside because I think it will get frosted but it should grow into a large tree. Maybe just take one of them. Keep the biggest one.
It's a big taproot. Can you smoke it? I don't know. I think so. I have to read the seed packet. Butterfly bush is a good pick. This butterfly bush has grown in like two years to be about 10 times the size it was when I planted it and it doesn't get any water because the water starts, the water in this bed starts on this side of it <coughs> here. The, uh, this is supposed to be a dwarf, dwarf mulberry, but <laughs> I didn't prune it and so it's growing really tall and big. I don't even know what I'm going to do with it because it's kind of weird because it's growing like right next to the mimosa trees and like which tree do I want, that one or that one. Uh, but it, it's been frosting in the winter so if it frosts and dies then I'll just probably try and like make it back into a bush size. Um, I'm really into the pineapple guavas. They're uh, crippled in size maybe since I planted them and they're an evergreen. I don't have that many evergreens around so this is a really nice one um, that I hope to keep 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 getting bigger so it's just kind of like a continuous hedge along here of the pineapple guava and maybe someday it will have fruit. It hasn't had fruit yet but it has the flowers. The flowers are worth it by themselves because they're pretty cool. Just herbs and stuff. The vinca. You see, I got this vinca stuff growing back underneath the porch that just kind of is a ground cover to keep uh, other plants from growing up under there. And that works well with no water, has purple flowers. I also grow a Mexican primrose that reseeds itself under there that's really pretty in the springtime. So, it's almost the, all the things. There's this uh, trumpet vine doesn't really get watered, and uh, but it frosts in this climate and <coughs> grows back from the from the bottom. Like down in Phoenix, it grows all year. But here we have to wait till uh, this time of year to get any of the orange flowers from it. The plum had a decent amount of plums, maybe 10 plums. There's uh, still a couple on here. An elephant heart plum. It's good. Still good. I thought it was going to be like too old. Um, the bugs, there's these Japanese beetles, I don't know what they're called, but they're like, they're like this big and they're shiny green and they uh it's kind of like a scarab size and they uh eat all the fruit around here so you have to protect all the peaches and all the plums and all the grapes they really like the grapes so i don't know if there's like a way to trap those and so, so you don't have to cover the fruit with because i use my mosquito net to cover the fruits Uh, Hyracantha is always a good fall color thing. Kind of a boring plant though, but looks nice in the fall and has a lot of, all. when all these are flowers, it gets a lot of bees in the springtime. So that's about what's going on. And uh, ask me some questions in the comments if you've got any